G'day, Nathan from Ozaki here again, looking at the AutoCAD architecture roof object. In this one, just going to have a look at some simple details about creating gables. Now, as in the last video discussed about creating your own roof tool with your own settings. And creating this tool, you can see that it picks up that this, these walls are up a little bit higher. Uh, we can create a gable just by dragging. Uh, we can create a different sort of gable by adding in another slope here but I'll show you something else that's happened to this edge if we just select these three edges and we do that by right clicking the object selecting the three edges you can see I'm just selecting the eave line which is just barely visible uh, and it highlights and you can see that when I've dragged that gable it's reset that edge to two four now just going back a bit when I create my gable, if I look at the properties in this gable, it's told to create it at a plate height of 2350, but I actually applied that to walls. These walls are actually 2.4 high, 2400 metric. So each edge started at 2.4 high. If we actually look at these edges, we'll see that they actually match the height of the wall, which is 2750. So when we apply, when we go to our, our, our uh, palette tool and apply to walls, it'll pick up the height of the walls in question. And when I've dragged this gable, it has actually reset that edge down to zero naughty. We'll set it back, we'll set the gable. Gable overhangs are not usually as big and what we're going to also do is this is a straight gable but you might have different shapes and we're going to rise it from that height there on this face so now we're dealing just with this face these two are immaterial down here uh, i'm going to add a second face to that edge and i'm going to add it at zero, it starts at 90 degrees slope, and then once it gets to 200 above that height, I'm going to change it back to the normal pitch, and we get um, what we might call a Dutch gable or something. If we edit that and reverse these pitches, you'll get another uh, what we call a gablet or something like that, um, whatever you want to call it. I've, I've altered the, the eaves here, so I've mucked that up. But you can see there a little uh, gambrel, gable, gablet, whatever we want to call it. Now, I did actually try to show you to have, you can actually add another edge here, but it kept crashing, and I'm not sure why, so I'm not going to do that. But there is, oh, I have actually had three or four or five edges here. There must be some reason why it's crashing. Okay, that's for a gable, uh, as I said, you can drag it for a gable. There's a, there's a situation here where on a normal roof, you would want that gable to run through and it creates a gable for that whole edge and that's because it is just one edge. And I'm gonna show you some tricks later on for how to get that gable to come through without affecting this slope over here. It essentially involves creating separate edges when you create the uh, roof object as as from walls and the normal way that you would think to create an object, you can see a problem here that the eaves is actually stopping the lower eaves from coming through. So we came up with this idea that the roof object does not overlap itself. It looks probably fine there, but once we bring the walls in, we can see the problem is that these walls stop this gutter line coming through here. It doesn't overlap itself. So how do we get around that? Well, I have a, an idea. It's just uh, just a method that I use. And somebody's just changed my shortcut code. But there you go. We're going to just create a, a rectangle. And then I'm going to create another one. Uh, I would normally use a very small number like 10 mil, which is What's that? Two third, and a third of an inch or something. Uh, I'm going to use 50, just for the purpose of, for the exercise. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the stretch command to stretch that back twice that, 100. And I get these two little squares here, OK? Now I'm going to go back to my roof object and I'm just going to click it this time. Now I've found that it actually performs better. I don't know if you're using a, a, a square roof, but and we don't have any overhang on this roof, which uh, is fine. Actually works better with overhang. Sometimes you might want to add the overhang last afterwards. I don't normally. I don't normally have to. All right. Now we've got this funny roof here. Uh, I don't know how good your imagination is, but it's quite a, a wicked little roof. That's not really what we wanted. What we wanted, we need to go in and reset these two edges. And the same on the other side. We need to set them to 90. Now I said that you can't, you can only do one face at a time. The first face was obviously zero. And I'm coming in and setting each slope to 90. And all of a sudden, we get what we want. So I'm just going to move that out the way for a sec. And I'm just going to edit these. Uh, well let's see. Oh no, we can still add overhang. We can have some bizarre things happening here. Had I had that overhang to start with, I could have done this at the same time. But these roofs don't want an overhang, these outside edges. And you can see an interesting thing happening there, and that is that the roof is now overhanging itself. Now, for some reason, oh, of course, because I didn't uh, apply to walls, it hasn't picked up the extra height. And you'll see that now I need to pick up the extra hops. All right. Now, what happens here? is you can see the roof is now coming underneath. You can also see these are not quite lined up. And I can stretch these back and forward to put them into the right position. I'm just going to guess here. But if I select that and have a look, you'll see that the roof is in fact doing what it's supposed to do. Now this is, remember, ADT1, the original roof object. Nothing's changed. Uh, it's still the same old object, and it still does exactly what it was uh, designed to do. We just didn't know it. You can see I've just sort of fiddled with that a bit um, in terms of getting that exact, because those roof pit planes weren't uh, showing up. I think if you get it almost perfect, and this is not a normal scale, this is like a doll's house, this, this thing, but if I get it at the normal height, these blue lines are your, if you look in your uh, your display box is actually the eave. I generally make that very tiny. Uh, make it, oh, I'm working in a CTB file. Uh, I'll m normally actually just turn them off so I don't see them. And that's what you're left with, which is pretty well an accurate shape. This would actually come here. There would actually be so a line that comes up here on your roof object. And you can see that this tiny little fudge would actually get lost. And you can make that as small as you need to. So I hope that's helpful to you. The roof object can underlap. Cheers.